my name is Deanna Kepka. I'm a college professor. And so I am used to having a podium and a monitor. So I feel very exposed. Um, I'm used to hiding behind things, but that's okay because this topic needs to be exposed. I'm going to talk about human papillomavirus. And what we have failed to even talk about today is that we have a cancer prevention vaccine. And this is a gift that we can give our children. And this gift is easier than genetic testing. It's easier than finding a friend for your child when they're going through cancer treatment to help them get through cancer treatment. This gift can prevent cancer better than early detection of cancer through pap testing or col colorectal cancer screening or mammography. All of those cancer screening tests detect precancer. The HPV vaccine prevents HPV infection, which causes cancer. It's truly a cancer prevention vaccine. We have a vaccine that prevents cancer that is horribly underused in the United States. And it is terrifically underused in the Mountain West and Utah especially. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how we need to turn this around. So, <clears throat> How many cancers are caused by HPV in the United States? We could fill the entire Rice-Eccles Stadium with people who have been impacted by an HPV-related cancer in one year. This is not just cervical cancer. These are cancers that affect the anogenital region of the human body. So that's the penile, male cancers too, anal, vaginal region, and the oral pharyngeal region, which is the back of your throat, um, and your tonsil area. So HPV cancers don't just affect women, they affect men and women. The highest incidence of HPV cancers are cervical, but then oral pharyngeal is the next highest incidence. It doesn't just cause cervical and HPV oral pharyngeal and anogenital, it also causes genital warts. You ask any teenager if they could get a vaccine to prevent genital warts, what do you think they'll say? This could be preventing 200,000 cases of genital warts times two each year in the US. That would be two Salt Lake cities each year in the US of genital warts. Genital warts are not gonna cause someone to die, but they can have lifelong morbidity. They can affect the quality of someone's life. They can cause a condition called JORP, which is, requires um, repeated um, surgeries of a child and teenager's throat to remove papillomatosis, which are warts that the mom has passed from her womb to the child through the cervical canal in birth of the HPV virus 6 and 11. So we can prevent that with the vaccine. So it's a bonus. Not only are we preventing cancer-causing HPV types, but we're also preventing 6 and 11, which causes genital warts and this other condition called JORP. Even more than that, many of us women know that when we have pap tests, we, um, when we have our pap exams, we are detecting the existence of HPV-related precancers. We have not been informed of this. Human papillomavirus causes abnormal pap tests. So if you get the vaccine, you will prevent abnormal pap tests. So how common are abnormal pap tests? One in 10 women have had an abnormal pap test. That's 1.4 million women each year have a precancer, a low-grade precancer. That's 330,000 more women have a high-grade precancer. What's the result of an abnormal pap test? There's LEAP procedures, there's cone procedures. That's where they freeze off a portion of your cervix that has been has, demonstrates precancerous tissue, or they surgically remove a portion of your cervix. Why is this bad? Well, it's emotionally stressful. It results in difficult conversations with your sexual partner. It could re result in miscarriage. It, it can even result in um, hysterectomy if you have a more advanced stage. Women who have abnormal pap tests and have precancers and cervical cancer tend to be in their reproductive years. So this HPV affects women's fertility. 
what could be more devastating to a woman than, to to than for her to be told she doesn't have the option to have a child? And we could prevent this with the HPV vaccine. But yet, there is all this stigma around the HPV vaccine in Utah and in the whole United States. So who has HPV infection? I've been doing this work in Utah for almost six years. I've been doing this work in the United States for 10 years. People love to say it's those people. It's those kids. It's not my kids. It's those other kids. It's those other folks. Who has human papillomavirus infection? I do. I have HPV infection. You do. You have HPV infection. We all have HPV infection. We have all had HPV infection. Nearly all of us have had it at one point in our lives or will have it at one point in our lives. It is the most common sexually transmitted infection in the world. But I would like to say, as a cancer prevention scientist, it is the least talked about. Even today, in our presentations today by top oncologists, least talk about. One in four of us here today have HPV infection. One in four of us who are sexually active individuals have HPV infection. How do you know if you have it? Most often it has absolutely no symptoms. You don't know you have it. So you pass it along without even knowing you were infected. Most of us with healthy immune systems clear it within six months to two years without even knowing that we had it. But what can we do to prevent HPV infection? What can you do for your children? You can give them two doses of the HPV vaccine. Many of you may remember this was a three-dose vaccine. Well, this vaccine is so effective, you only need to give two doses. Two doses, that's it. So two doses for kids under the age of 15 within a one-year time frame. Perfect. Take them in at age 11, go back at age 12, two doses. Your doctor or your nurse practitioner should be strongly recommending this vaccine with the other vaccines that are given to your child at this age, at this time in their lives, which are Tdap, the Minactra, or meningococcal. How are other countries in the world doing with this vaccine? Well, Australia, just this month, had lots of news just hitting the scientific press. They are going to be the first country in the world to eradicate a cancer. Eradicate a cancer. Why? Because they have integrated HPV vaccination into their primary care delivery system within their school-based immunization um, healthcare practices. We, on the other hand, because we're conservative Americans, have puritanical values, are very question science, are not going to be able to say that we can eradicate a cancer as soon as Australia, unless we turn this around. Furthermore, Utah is going to even be further behind. If you look at, so in the United States, we have about half of our girls completing the vaccine series. We have less than half of our boys. And if you look at the Mountain West, you look at Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, we're in the lowest quintiles of the country. Less than 40% of our kids are completing the recommended doses for this vaccine. We are denying our kids the opportunity to prevent genital warts, abnormal pap tests, and all of those HPV-related cancers because we are not integrating this into our healthcare system. We are state number 49 for boys, 49. We have, a we have phenomenal universities here, state of the art and scientific education, and yet we are not accepting this cancer prevention vaccine for our boys. And state number 40 for girls, 40. We can do better. We truly can do better. Wait, why? Why are we so slow about this? Some people say, oh, it's a new vaccine. No, this vaccine has been recommended for more than 10 years for girls, since 2006. It prevents infection with nine HPV types. That's 90% of the HPV types that cause cervical cancer and 99% of the types that cause genital warts. 
and it has been shown to be more safe and effective than the other vaccines that we give to our kids at the exact same age, which are called Tdap and meningococcal. The vaccine um, safety registry at the Centers for Disease Control has better outcomes for HPV than the other immunizations that we're giving to our kids at the same age. This is a safe and effective cancer prevention vaccine that is not talked about and is not being integrated into our primary care delivery system the way it should be. Let's turn these numbers around. If your primary care provider does not, ask for, does not recommend this vaccine when your child is in for their well child visit, demand it. When you bring in your child for a strep throat visit, ask for it. An ear infection visit, ask for it. It needs to be delivered at any time when you're in that physician's office. If you come in and you're at that point of care and you walk out, then that was a missed opportunity for the vaccine. You just denied your child the gift of cancer prevention. You had the opportunity for it and you did not get it for your child. Insurance is not a barrier. Undocumented status is not a barrier. Because in the United States, we have a program called the Vaccines for Children program. And that means if the Centers for Disease Control recommend this vaccine by the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices up through age 18, the health department through the Vaccines for Children program cannot deny a child the HPV vaccine if it's part of the ACIP recommended vaccines, regardless of ability to pay. So regardless of ability to pay, if it's recommended by the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, you can get this vaccine for your child at federally qualified community health centers or at health departments. And this vaccine is so effective, the data have been so promising that we have dropped one dose from the immunization series, from three doses to two doses. And that's why it's even better to get the vaccine at a younger age. If you wait until age 15, up through 26 for women or 21 for men, then you'll need three doses in a much tighter time frame. Is this vaccine just for girls? No, even though apparently in Utah we seem to think that way. This vaccine needs to be as strongly recommended for girls as it is for boys. And even more so now than ever before. Because HPV oral pharyngeal cancer, which is the cancer that affects the back of the throat um, and the tonsil area, has now surpassed incidence in men than, in, um, than cervical cancer in women, which means the most common HPV-related cancer is now a male cancer, not a female cancer. And if you look at those dark blue um, bars, those are HPV 16 and 18 cancers. And I was trying to think of an analogy for this, and so I would call those the tsunami HPV types. They cause the most HPV-related cancers. And then the other, the lighter blue, are like the hurricane types, and then the even lightest blue are the tropical storms. So if you need to protect against those darkest blue types, those are the ones that are covered in the vaccine, and that's why the vaccine is so important. But then you can't just ignore the lighter blue types, and that's why PAP testing or HPV co-testing, and then soon we'll be moving into HPV testing alone, are so important to make sure that your body um, is clearing those other HPV types or that your healthcare provider is monitoring infection with the other um, HPV types for the vaginal cervical region. But the trick is with men and with women who have oral HPV, we don't have an HPV test for oral HPV. So women, we have the pap test and we have HPV test for the cervix. We don't have that for the oral region. That's why the vaccine is even more important. We don't have a, a fail safe. We don't have another stage of detection for this upper region. What are we doing in Utah? What are we doing at Huntsman Cancer Institute? We received a grant from the National Cancer Institute to work on working together. So primary care organizations, physicians, nurses, health departments at the state level, at the county level, parent groups, churches. Let's get to know what's going on with the barriers around this vaccine in Utah and in the nearby states. Let's learn about how we can improve attitudes around it, how we can improve awareness, how we can integrate this in every single talk about how to prevent cancer. We need to do that. We need to turn this around. <clears throat> so 
So we built this coalition where our vision is working together across disciplines, listening to each other, keeping each other up to date on the state of the science and on the evidence around how this vaccine works and how we can work with doctors and nurses and healthcare delivery teams to make strong recommendations for the vaccine. If you go into your doctor's office and the nurse is on board, your doctor's on board, but if the receptionist said, oh, I didn't get that vaccine for my daughter, are you gonna get the vaccine? No, you need to have everyone at the health clinic on board. Everyone needs to be on board with this cancer prevention vaccine. So that's what we're working to do, training entire healthcare clinic practices. So we have spread out, we started off with just a couple states and now we're in the entire Mountain West region. We have participation from across the whole United States learning about how we're working together, learning about how we're staying informed with the hottest topics and the state of the science around HPV vaccination. The field has changed so much just in the time that I've been involved, we were learning about how this vaccine is working. We're learning about how um, the evidence around um, its effectiveness, which has allowed us to drop down from a three-dose series to a two-dose series. And we're also learning about how countries that are integrating the vaccine into um, their platform, they are reducing cervical cancer, they're reducing um, genital warts, and we are also reducing those things. We're reducing genital warts and precancers, but not as, a quick, at, as quick of a pace as we could be. So we need to try and improve that. So <clears throat> we have monthly activities. If you want to join our coalition, feel free to email me or anyone on my team. Stay up to date. These activities are done via webinar, so you can participate from anywhere in the world. And then we also have in-person meetings, and we are hosting um, a national meeting coming up in June where we're hosting experts from all around the country, from the Centers for Disease Control and from the National Cancer Institute to talk about um, the state of the science and how cancer centers like Huntsman Cancer Institute can do a better job in their region as oncologists, as the experts in cancer treatment, how we can not only work in cancer treatment, but we can also be seen as the experts in cancer prevention education and outreach and intervention development. So thank you so much for your time. These are the most important steps is working with providers, strengthening that recommendation, demanding that recommendation and making sure your child completes the series. My son just turned nine years old and I'm looking forward to giving him that gift of cancer prevention as soon as I can. Thank you.